when Dr. Robin stops telling the story of what happened to his daughter on that day. It happened five years ago when I was working in my laboratory. My daughter Quinn, 17 years old, was coming home late from school. He had some work at her friend's house. She had already told me during a call that I shouldn't worry. She said she would come by herself. It was around 9 p.m., and I waited for her until midnight. When she didn't come home, I went looking for her, and this is what I found on the way to her friend's house. An abandoned street where many dogs were fighting over a bone. When I looked closely, I realized it was a human leg. As I looked further, I saw the entire body cut into pieces, with no clothes on. I immediately called the police and tried to find the skull of the person, but I couldn't find it. I also felt fear for my daughter. I tried calling her, but her mobile was switched off. Suddenly, I noticed a mobile phone thrown into a corner of a dustbin. When I examined the phone closely, I cannot express the situation in words. It was Quinn's mobile phone, and the last message she sent me was, Father, please help me. However, her message didn't reach me because she was brutally killed before sending it. A few minutes later, the police arrived at the scene and understood the situation. Alex and Lucia also arrived there after a few hours. The police discovered that 30% of the body had been eaten by street dogs. On that day, I decided that one day I would seek justice for my daughter. After a few months, the police found the culprits, and they admitted their crime. But for me, I always wanted them to die. Lifetime imprisonment wasn't enough for them. Before their trial, they showed no remorse for their heinous crime. My little daughter was killed and raped by these three people and they brutally dismembered her just for their satisfaction. When I learned that they were released by the court after paying a large sum of money to influential government officials, all my hopes were shattered. But today, King Omex has done a great job organizing this event, and due to this event, these people have faced death. After hearing everything, Alessa said, It's a really sad thing, but why does this girl have the same name as Quinn? Dr. Robin replied, when she kills someone, she takes their identity, and she registers herself with that name everywhere. She has no name since birth, so she adopts names after killing her victims. And then they arrived at the lab. On the other side, inside the hotel, Commander Totem subdued all severely injured criminals, and now they reached the fifth floor where King Omex was. He opened the gate and started fighting with some subordinates who were standing in front of the gate. It took him some time, but with the help of his soldiers, he managed to kill all of them. Meanwhile, King Omex closed his eyes and started meditating, deep in thought. And they all stood there, as if time had stopped. Now, what happens next? When Alessa and Lily left Alex, the three of them started fighting. King Omex stayed aside, watching the entire fight. Dindon fought with Alex. Adina fought with Ryzen, the god of savior who had no fighting abilities and could only dodge and protect King Omex. And Pacha fought with Manya. Meanwhile, some other subordinates were standing at the front gate, awaiting Commander Totem's entry. Dindon used his chainsaw, attempting to kill Alex, but the chainsaw got stuck between his bones. He tried to remove it, but he couldn't believe that Alex was still alive. How are you still alive? He exclaimed, and then resumed fighting with a knife. Somehow, he managed to use the knife to create a large hole in Alex's stomach. Alex felt the pain, but his bone slowly recovered from the damage. Tindon then pulled the pin of a high-explosive grenade and tried to insert it into the hole. However, Alex caught both of his hands despite his severe injuries. Unable to throw the grenade, Tindon's body gave up and the grenade exploded with him. His body was obliterated. Dindon attempted to pull out another grenade, but before he could throw it at Alex, his body collapsed, causing the grenade to explode in his hand and wipe out his entire body. Meanwhile, Alex's body slowly recovered from the damage. He stood up, removed the chainsaw that was stuck in his chest, enduring a great deal of pain. On the other side, Pacha fought with Mania. The fight between them was intense. When Mania saw that Dindon had been killed, she became fully enraged at Alex. 
Because she loved him, she ran towards Alex to kill him, but Pacha seized this as an opportunity and cut off both of Manya's legs. With no strength left, Manya attempted to throw her screwdriver at Pacha, but Pacha caught it and threw it back in reverse. The screwdriver struck Manya's head, killing her. Meanwhile, Adino and Ryzen were engaged in a battle. Ryzen deflected every bullet shot by Adino using his magic. Adino knew he only had one magazine left, and he was aware that there were more enemies to face, while Ryzen was a god. Alex called out, Take care of Ryzen. I will go after King Omix. Upon hearing this, Ryzen used his powers to slow down time and went towards King Omex, telling him, now, I can't help you anymore if Alex is involved in this battle with the gods. I need to leave. And he goes out. They then see that only King Omex is there before Adino and Pacha run towards him. Welcome to the Soul World, friends. King Omex greets them. They all standing in the shape of a cross, with their heads towards the sky, their eyes completely white. At the same time, the army commander reached the fifth floor. When Commander Totem saw this, he wondered. What's happening here? Is there a god among us? He indicates a soldier to take a position from the right. But as the soldier moves ahead, he also stands in the shape of cross. Commander Totem doesn't understand what's happening. He commands all troops, saying. Stay back. We will not go ahead. One soldier asks. Should we kill that person from here? Commander Totem responds. No, these people's lives are in danger. Pointing at King Omex. He is controlling everyone here. King Omex has possessed a new god, the god of souls. All the souls from the bodies have been transferred to the soul world, which is ruled by Wynn. On the other side of Last Down Town, Diaga is having a conversation with Trent, his secretary, and Gilbert. Diaga asks, Do you remember which god you saw on that day? The one possessed by King Omex? I'm not certain Trent responds. But when he possessed that god, the whole earth was shaking. The building I was in collapsed, and I managed to jump out before it was completely demolished. Diaga looks at Gilbert and says, Adino is in real trouble now. We need to help him. And they all laugh together. Here, what was Diaga's intention in sending Adino to that event? Did he prepare this for his son? And is it for Gilbert? Or did he not know about it? To get all these answers, don't forget to watch the last episode of Season 1 of The Mystic Skeleton.